Let's see how to create an audit by column system for our applications that use Entity Framework Core. The idea is that we want each time a record is created or updated in our database, the time of the operation and the user who performed the operation is saved. We call this audit by columns because in this kind of audit, each table will have columns that indicate the user who created a record and the last user who modified a record, in addition to indicating the dates on which this operation occurred. This is different from a table audit, where we have a specialized audit table where a history of the changes of each record of each table is kept. With Entity Framework Core, we can automate this audit by columns, so you don't have to go coding to place the user who has performed the operation in each place where you update or insert a record. But we can centralize this operation in one place, so that it always works. We are going to do this example in an ASP.NET Core MVC application with Entity Framework Core 2.2, with its user system. However, what we are going to learn applies to all types of .NET applications that use Entity Framework Core. We'll start by creating an ASP.NET Core application. Let's click here and let's click Next. For the name of the project, we will choose Audit EF Core. Of course, the code for this project is going to be on GitHub. Let's click Create and the link will be in the description of this video. Let's select Web Application Model View Controller and let's go to Authentication and click Change. Let's go to Individual User Account, Store User Accounts in App. Let's press OK and let's press Create. When the application is created, we can run it. Let's press Ctrl F5 just to see that everything works correctly. We are here in our application. Let's click on Register. Let's write an email like felipe at hotmail.com. Let's use a super secret password. It must have lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and non alphanumeric characters. Let's click on Register and we're going to get an error. Let's click on Apply Migrations. Let's refresh the page and let's fill the form again. Let's click register again and now we have our user registered in the database. So far so good. So let's go back to Visual Studio and start working on this example. As I said, each table in our database will have a user creation and creation date columns. Since this means that each of our models will have these properties, we will start by creating an abstract class in the models folder. So let's go to the models folder and create a new class. We'll call it Entity, and let's make it Abstract. And we will have the following five properties. An ID property, a created by user property, created date, and the same information for modification. Modified by user, and modified date. Now, each of our models must inherit from this Entity class if we want to use the Audit by Columns functionality. Suppose we're going to have a model called person, which is going to have a name property, and we want to be able to audit this model. So let's create this class. Let's go to here, add class, person, let's inherit from entity, and let's use a name property. Now what we're going to do is create a controller with its views in order to have a person crud. For that, we will create a controller using a scaffolding. So let's go to the controllers folder, right click, add controller. Let's choose this option, MVC controller with views using entity framework. Let's click on add. Let's choose the model class person. And for the data context, we're going to use the application DB context. And now let's click on add. As we can see, we have our controller here and we have our views in the people folder. We have to go to the create view and remove all the controls related to our audit by column systems. So we're going to delete this created by, created date, modified by user, and modified date. This because we want to fill this information automatically. Let's go to the edit view and do the same. Let's remove these four controls and we're good to go with the views. Now let's go to our application DB context and change the name of this property to people. Let's click Save. Now we must add a new migration and then create our new people table in the database. For that, we're going to go to the Package Manager console. If you don't have it here, you can go to the Tools menu and then go to Nugget Package Manager and you can find here the Package Manager console. Let's say Add Migration, Add People Table and let's press Enter. We have our migration here and now let's use the command 
update database. This will create that people table in our database. Let's go to the layout here in the share folder because we want to create a new menu for our people index view. So let's copy and paste this. Let's change the controller for people and let's change this text also to people. Now we can press control F5 and now we see that we have the people menu here. We can click on it and we see we have our index of people. We can click on create new and we will have our menu here, which is fine, but we haven't yet implemented the audit by column system. So let's do that right now. So we need to write a function that is executed every time we're going to insert or update a record. We can do this by overriding the safe changes async method of the application DB context. I say that we're going to override the safe changes async method because if you go to the people controller, you will see that we're only using the safe changes async method. We're not using the safe changes method. This is because we want to use asynchronous programming when talking to the database. So now let's go to the application DB context class and let's override the safe changes async method. So let's say override safe changes async. We're going to use the one that only says cancellation token. Of course, if you use any other of the overloads of safe changes, you should also overwrite those. We will create a method called process safe and we will create this private method here. Private void process safe. And now let's implement our added by column system. Let's create a variable with the current time and we will say daytime offset UDC now. And now we want to iterate every single change that is going to go to the database, whether it's an addition or a modification. So we're going to say for each bar item in the change tracker entries. In the change tracker dot entries, we can get a list of all the entries that are going to be modified in the database. Now let's use link queue. So we will say where control dot to bring the system dot link queue namespace here to this class. And now we're going to use a lambda expression here and say where the state is equal to entity state added and e dot entity is of type entity. So what we're saying here is that we want to filter by those entries that are being added to the database and which can be cast to entity, which is our abstract class that we created earlier. So now that we know all this information, we can save our entity item dot entity and we cast it as entity. And now we fill all the information that we want. Let's populate created date with our current time, current date and time, of course, created by user. We're going to leave it this blank for now. We're going to address this later. Let's just concentrate on the dates and on the general structure of our method. Modified date, current time, modified by user. Again, we will leave it blank. We are going to work on addition and modification separately. So what we're going to do is that we're going to copy this and we will change this for modified. And of course, we don't need to modify the created date nor the created by user information. But something that we're going to do is that we're going to say item dot property name of entity creation date or created date. And we're going to say that this is not going to be modified. This way we make sure that we're not modifying the created date nor the created by user information. Again, this is only in the case that we're modifying a record in the database. Now let's work on the user information. We know that in ASP.NET Core, we can use the HTTP context class to bring the information of the login user, but it will not be correct if we hard code here a reference to the HTTP context or any class that helps us find the user who has performed the operation. This is because then we will be creating a dependency without need between our application DB context and HTTP context. This makes your application DB context limited to being used in an ASP.NET environment. We can use the dependency inversion principle, which says that we must depend on abstractions and not on concrete types. This to ensure that we have a loosely coupled relationship between our application DB context and the mechanism 
of obtaining the identity of the current user. So what should we do then? Well, what we are going to do is to create an interface. Let's first create a folder. We'll call it helpers. And now let's create an interface in it. New item, interface, and we will call the interface a current user service. Basically, this interface represents an abstraction that we can depend on or that we can reference on our application DB context. So let's make it public and let's put here the signature, a string, get current username. Now, any class that implements this interface must implement this method. So let's copy this and let's create a new class here. We will call it current user service. And this will implement our interface. Let's implement this interface. And now we are going to use the HTTP context class to retrieve the user information. For that, we're going to inject the IHTTP context accessor service, IHTTP context accessor, and let's make it a field. Let's bring the namespace, and now let's make it a field, and let's add an all check, and now let's return HTTP context accessor, HTTP context, user, identity, name. If you want, you can verify first that there is an user authenticated in this session. We're not going to do that here, but what we're going to do is that we're going to take this and let's go to the startup class and we're going to the configure services method just to register this new service. So let's say services at transient iCurrent user service and let's bring the namespace and let's say that whenever we want an iCurrent user service, we will be served a current user service implementation. And that's it. Now with this, we can go back to our application DB context class. We can use dependency injection here. Let's say I current user service, current user service. Let's bring the namespace. Let's create an initialize the field. And we can add an all check if we want. And now we are going to use this field that we have here in our process safe method. Now we will say current user service, get current user name. And in this way, we have a loosely coupled relationship between our application DB context and the mechanism that we use to retrieve the current user information. So now this application DB context can work not only in an ASP.NET environment, but we can also use it on, for example, a WPF application, a console application, a WinForm application, or whatever place we want, because there is not a tight relationship between our application DB context and the HTTP context. And this is it. Now we can test our application. Let's press Ctrl F5 so we can test our application. Let's close this. And now let's go to people. Let's go to create new. Let's put a name here, Scott, for example. Let's click on create and we can see that the person Scott was created by Felipe. In what date? In this date what we have here. And it was also modified by the same user and in the same date. And of course, if we click edit, we can see we can change Scott for Scott 2. Let's click on save. And we see that the name has been updated, but the created date has not been updated, but the modified date was updated, as you can see. So in this video, we learn how to implement a audit by column system in ASP.NET Core. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, click on the like button, and leave a comment on what you want my next tutorial to be about. Alright, take care.